Maurice, the PB um, secretary, is on this call, as well as some other PB folks. Um, so that it will be muted. But the questions, if you have questions, you can email them in. Um, am I saying that right, Maurice? Uh, if you have any questions, use the chat box, and then we'll get to all chat the questions. Box. So I have another person physically here with me. I'm actually sitting at the University of Buffalo with the president of the University of Buffalo's chapter. Good evening. Who's also one of my sorors. <laughs> There's a soror on the phone too. Good evening, All right, so good evening. This is Christine Wingo. I am your National Programs Collegiate Initiative Chairperson for the 2018-2020 um, term. We are meeting tonight in regards to getting ourselves prepared for our fall regional conferences and career fair. So I'm going to go over a few items during this call. If you have any questions, please feel free to use the chat box area. And those questions, you write them down, we will address them um, towards the end of the presentation. There's approximately 25 slides. And during that time, um, you should be able to um, get some information that you need to share with others who may not be on this call. And I believe it is recorded so that you can also access it and share it in the future with your uh, chapters and folks in your specific region. So with that being said, I'll get started with our presentation. So tonight, the agenda, I'll start off with an introduction. Um, college initiative programs, FRC, uh, ca career fair preparation, and some strategies that you can use. And then we'll end this up with a question and answer session, which again, you do have the option of typing your questions in on the chat box area, in the chat box area. And then we'll do a final closing. So introduction. Um, my name is Christine Wingo. I've been with Nesby for a very long time. Uh, I started with Nesby in the early 90s as a high school student and then became an avid chapter member in 92 at the University of Buffalo. So I'm actually sitting at my alma mater with uh, one of the chapter members and president from that particular chapter. Uh, I'm an industrial engineer, I've completed several degrees, and I won't bore you with the, all of that minutia, but I will say that uh, I currently work at Buffalo State College, which is not too far from UB, and uh, where I teach technology um, to several different levels of students. So, enough about me, let's move on to Nesby Business. NESBY, uh, Collegiate Initiative Program, the ones that we are uh, known for in our particular zone, which is part of the program zone, professionalism workshops, fall regional conferences, uh, your programming that happens at those fall regional conferences, as well as your national convention, which I should have put up there as well. We do programming during those moments as well. Uh, NESBY Retention Program, CI Mentoring Program, and your Young Technical Professional. If you have not heard of those programs before, we welcome you to visit our website and get more insight on those. For those who are on the call and may not necessarily know where your specific region meeting will be or conference will be, all regions will be um, between the months of October and November with some uh, weekends repeating themselves. So please make note of those dates and times. I myself will be attending Region 1 and possibly Region 2, Niagara Falls and uh, Pittsburgh. For tonight's topic, career fair preparation for 2019 FRC. 
Um, four topics that I'm going to really um, marinate on would be resume boot camp, mock interviews, graduating seniors reception, which is called a GSR, and our professional image consultancy area, which at one time was called Boutique Upgrade Me or Business Image Consultancy Area. All of those are, uh, are archive names for that particular area, but we will go into detail as to what that looks like. Resume Bootcamp. Um, prior to attending the FRC, it is recommended that you take the time to uh, go and develop a Nessie profile first, um, and as well as attend your chapter resume workshop that may be offered before um, the regional convention conference. Um, you also have an option. Each college campus has a career uh, campus preparation center. In those career preparation uh, centers, sometimes there is a representative that deals only with engineering and techn technical students where they know how to fashion your resume so that you are putting the right um, words on your um, resume to make sure that it is being attractive to the potential companies that you would like to work for. Additionally, some of the regions are offering online assistance prior to FRC by offering you the opportunity to upload your resume and one of their volunteers with their CI team or their chapter will take your resume and look at it and review it and give you some feedback electronically, which is a plus so that before you get to the FRC, you can make sure that you have a polished resume for you to distribute to your potential um, employer. On-site resume review sessions are offered throughout each region at the FRC um, conference. That may happen on the night that everybody's arriving. It may be a room set aside. There may also be an opportunity during the day before the, the career fair that you can go and visit the booth where there will be some professionals, um, negative professionals and or corporate sponsors who are willing to look at your resume and give you some feedback. When you receive that feedback, it is a good idea to take it to heart. And I mean not personally, but to heart where you take the tips and strategies that they're sharing with you so that you have the proper information on your resume so that you give a good and great portrait of yourself and market yourself well enough so that you end up with the position that you are looking to receive. NSBE professionals and corporate representatives volunteer their time and expertise and feedback to give you um, a polished resume. And in that process, they may offer different things from what you should say, how you should present a particular position that you've had. And even for those freshmen who may be on the call, and have not really worked in a technical role, they will also tell you how to fashion some of the experience you have in retail, which could be transferable skills into other settings, which we'll talk about in a few moments. Each region will have varied times and spaces where this is offered. So it will be a great idea once you get to FRC, download that Nesby Guidebook app on your phone first and then look on there and see if there's any information on there that would definitely give you some guidance on where to go to get assistance with your resume. If that is not posted where you can find it, there's always the option of asking registration booth attendees and or individuals who are working with the conference as far as the, the FRC committee or the FRC chair um, those individuals will also know how to direct you in the right place so that you are getting the assistance you need with those registration, with those uh, resume critiques during the boot camp. All right, on-site printing and computer usage. This may strictly vary depending on the amount of resources and if there is printing options available through the hotel or the convention center where you're at, um, each region is working towards making sure that there is something there for you to use. My biggest suggestion, I still go back to the top where I say, if your 
region has an online assistance process prior to FRC. Use that, make your copies before you come, and then print them and pack them in your luggage so that you're not scuffling to get that done once you arrive at FRC or right before the conference uh, career fair starts. And I noticed um, just in the past, just working as CI in Region 1 and as well as working as CI on a national level, there's been moments where students are offered an opportunity to work with a company and they may not necessarily have the right things on their resume and they may be sent back to our career prep center to get those things rectified and then come back. But they're met with a long line which may wrap around several different halls or rooms or whatever. So you don't want to get caught in that um, aspect, but if you do, we'll work with you to help you get what you need. The last thing that I have put here is um, invest in a great portfolio, um, something that you can store your resumes in. It gives you a polished presentation when you're working and talking with uh, professionals and recruiters to identify an opportunity in an engineering role. If you don't have a portfolio right now, some other suggestions that I might add is to get a nice black folder, um, which has pockets, and you can put the resumes inside of there and also carry that around as well. Some regions have provided portfolios, but that is all contingent on regional resources. Um, it should not be expected that we are giving you portfolios. So I just want to be clear on that aspect of that. Um, one other piece that I want to add to Resume Bootcamp, some companies, if you go through the guidebook, you before you go into the career fair or the night before and after you did your resume, you notice, hey, this company is asking for an application or some type of, uh, I believe it's intake form or intake process. It will be a great idea if you could do it before you get into the career fair that you fill that out. If this is a company that you would want to work for, that you go ahead and fill that out and make sure that you have the appropriate items on there and that your resume matches what you said in that intake form. All right, so that's what we have for resumes. In that same area, there may be some professionals, if they're reviewing your resume, they may offer an opportunity to um, give you a mock interview. And if they are willing to do so, you should ask. Um, the worst thing anybody could ever tell you is no, right? So. If you ask and they're able to offer you an interview, this is just sheer practice before you get in front of this company to exhibit the skill set that you have to offer them. So one other key that I like to offer to folks who may never have been to FRC is to go to your um, campus career planning office and schedule an interview with someone who is familiar with what engineering recruiters may ask for. At University of Buffalo, um, is Holly Justice still here? Is Holly Justice still here? Yeah. Or so Holly Justice, if you're a University of Buffalo uh, person, Holly Justice, she is very well equipped to help all the engineering students and technical majors, computer science, all of those folks with those degrees, the group disciplines to put their resume in the right fashion as well as give them a mock interview. And I believe that the University of Buffalo's chapter offers a, a chapter mock interview workshop and resume workshop which offers that. Each chapter should offer either those jointly or separately or also offer a, a collaborative service through the career planning and placement service at your particular institution. And as the president of the Nesby chapter has just indicated, she said that they also offer a mock interview like fair. It's, it's like a, a fake career fair. So you get to walk up and talk to professionals and get your feet wet in that area. So look and ask and see if your particular um, institution offers that option for you. One other thing that I've found is you offer, uh, ask one of your professors. Um, they have a great aspect 
or a great view or perspective on how you should present yourself on your resume as well. If you're going into industry, you want a resume, but if you're going into academia, then it will be a curriculum vitae. However, as freshmen through senior year, you won't necessarily need a CV, but I would suggest just start developing one if you intend on going into um, academia where you're going to be a professor teaching in engineering or some other type of technical course. Those are some things to consider as well. If you know or have close relationship with your professionals in your particular region, they may be willing to come in and do a specific mock interview uh, workshop for you as well. Please make sure you exhaust all of your resources that are local to your chapter. Um, by the time you get to us at FRC, NSBE professionals, engineers, and corporate reps who are attending the conference will volunteer their time and expertise again to give you an interview. And this person may review your resume. So you will come with your resume, and they will offer feedback, tips, and strategies on how to conduct yourself during an interview. And so how that happens is what I've always heard is that a great interview always ends up in a conversation. There's always a little bit of laughter, there's always a little bit of levity, but then there's a side of seriousness that needs to occur with that as well. When you go through this process, it is very, very, very well recommended that you go and, and be open to the critique. Expect some suggestions and make the suggested adjustments to your resume as you're given them and or your approach or your delivery of whatever you're saying as they're being provided to you. Um, most of the professionals have either walked down the same road you're on, because apparently they have a job as an engineer, so they do have that experience. And then some of those professionals are the actual recruiters that you may see the next day. So if they're giving you some little hints and pulling on your coattail and telling you, hey, you may want to change that font, or you might want to take this word off of here and change it to this, or adjust that to say this, be sure that you take heed to what they're saying because if you get in their line and you give them the resume that you were supposed to adjust and they notice that it was not adjusted, that may not work well for you. So you want to be sure that you do that. The next thing is when you're in this mock interview, because it's a mock interview, feel free to ask questions for clarity and understanding. If you receive some feedback that says, hey, I think you should Think about what you're saying and how you're saying it. If you think that um, my body motions are too much or there's too much jewelry that I'm wearing or your perfum perfume met me before you said anything, all of those sorts of feedback will be good essential tools to take with you when you get ready to go to FRC um, or when you get ready to go into the career fair. Those are things that uh, these individuals may share with you. Anytime you approach a business setting and you are looking for a job specifically when you're looking for a job, it's a great thing to just smile. That changes the atmosphere. A firm handshake and direct eye contact goes a long way. Um, if you're looking at the floor or focused on other things going around you, it gives the other person the impression that you're not interested. So body language is very key in this process. And if you're talking and you're close, Circuit areas, don't forget to pop that breath mint in your mouth. Never leave home without your oral insurance. So, and if that requires you to put a little piece of mint in your mouth, I wouldn't necessarily say gum if you like to crack it and pop it. Those are not things that would be very professional, but a piece of mint would be great for you to do. Um, next slide. Regional graduating senior reception. This may occur as a reception or a luncheon, which is designated um, or designed by your region as they see fit to either be a luncheon or a reception. This acknowledges your graduating seniors, meaning fall 2019, or your seniors from spring 2020. These individuals at this event will participate in the Order of the Engineer Ceremony, which is where you will recite the Order of the Engineering Oath, 
and that will be conducted by one of your NSBE leaders and or sponsor of the event. You will also have an opportunity to network and fellowship with other graduating seniors and corporate representatives, as well as NSBE leadership. Enjoy, uh, you will enjoy a keynote speaker. Depending on the time constraints, it, that may not happen in some regions, but for some regions, they will be able to provide a keynote speaker. You will receive a regional token, which may or may not be the same from region to region, and it also is dependent heavily on sponsorship. So just a little background so that folks are aware, those tokens that you may get, as you can see on the my right, your left, probably depending on how you're looking at the screen, you will see a group of NSBE graduates from Region 1. And on the other side, that's Region 2, they have their sashes or stoles, which are embroidered with NSBE and a NSBE symbol. Each region, I think Region 1 gave away portfolios last year, and Region 2 gave away stoles. Each region does not give away the same gift. And each year, the same gifts are not given away. Are, each year, the, the, the same gifts, gifts are not given, but it may be some type of gift that you do receive. Uh, you will be asked to participate in the group photo, which is shown again at the bottom there. And if anyone had a moment to look at our national website from last, uh, NSB 45, our GSR that we had at Nationals last year, there was a huge photo that we took on a huge staircase in Detroit. So just think about uh, those things. Those are the things to come for our graduating seniors. So finish strong, finish diligently, and make sure you do what you need to do to walk across that stage in May or December. The next part, and I will pause here for a second. And just say that we have done this for years, um, professional image consultancy area, but it may have been known to some as the professional image, um, I'm sorry, the business image consultancy area BIC, or years ago it was called Boutique Upgrade Me. Now, I want to put a disclaimer out here. This is to assist our membership and understanding what is the expectations are when you approach a corporate function in hopes of identifying um, viable employment for yourself in the engineering field. If you look over at the picture that is presented, it gives you a scope of what is acceptable for our conference. It could vary in many different aspects, and there are trendy and pop type of things that give you a different look. But typically, when you're going for an interview, you want to go as conservative as you can. Um, everyone has a personality. Everyone has a style. That is all understood. If you look at the very left side of that picture, it shows you the casual for the male and the casual for the female. It also gives you all the way up the scope, in between those two, what you may be able to do with a cardigan for the ladies and a nice little shoe with a nice skirt. Also, for the professional side, for both men and women, um, there's, you can wear different variances of suits. When we say professional attire at the career fair, that means that you are walking in with a sport coat, even if it's not a full suit, a sport coat or a blazer, and or dress black, dress pants, and or a skirt. Your apparel should be pretty much clean <laughs> and ironed and well uh, prepared for you to wear. Shoes should be polished, and your accessories, as such as your ties, socks, hosiery, all those things should be intact as well. Um, one area, these are some areas that we do provide for those individuals who may have forgot to pack something. That is also contingent on sponsorship. All of these items are contingent on what 
your region has in their budget to assist with that area. Personal care items such as mints, deodorant, um, some regions have been able to solidify collaborations with Mary Kay and other makeup consultancies that are able to donate products. If that is the case, you're usually applying those yourself, but they will be there for you to take and use. The longest line in our pick area is usually the barber line. And it's always with a list <laughs> that the guys have to sign along with a waiver and some other things that go with that. It is recommended that you try to lock down those services prior to coming to the convention conference. But if you are not able to and the service is available, you're more than welcome to use it. Cosmetology services, sometimes we're able to secure a cosmetologist, meaning a woman or a man who can do um, women's hair with just the basics. No chemicals will be applied, no washing services, any of those sorts of things will be done. What we offer or could offer from that aspect would be just a simple, let me bend your hair under with the curling irons or the flat irons, whatever those services are, that is about the maximum that they will do. There will be no cutting, there will be no coloring or washing. So just so we're clear on what the cosmetology services are. Those individuals who offer those services, Depending on the region and the budget, those individuals are sometimes volunteering their services. So if you are able to um, benefit from those services, please be kind to those folks who are rendering that service to you. Some professional items that may be available to you are ink pens or portfolios. If your region has the sponsorship for them or there's a sponsor that comes through and says, hey, we had these laying in our area and we thought we would bring them so that your membership can use them, uh, as well as folders. So we're at 9.30, we're about midway our slide. This is another photo that I just wanted to give an idea to those who may be a little confused or just wanted some more information on what is acceptable. So white tie, black tie, black tie optional, semi-formal business, those first four you may not use for Nesby unless for the black tie optional area that may be for uh, our GTAs at nationals, those are opportunities where you would do that. Business casual, business professional, they're interchangeably used here. And then there's a casual look, which is the polos and the khakis that you will see some of the recruiters wear with their logos on them. Um, I don't necessarily suggest that for you when you're going to the career fair, but if it's a day where you're not going in the career fair, that may also be an acceptable attire. For the after 5 p.m. session, ultra casual may be acceptable. And under no circumstances should we do the last one, which is sloppy. <laughs> so, these will also, you can reference these at a later time. Interview suit. Here we have the so options one, two, three, four, and six are acceptable um, ways to present yourself at, at any of the national convention career fairs and or FRC career fairs. Um, number five, the top part is great, but she has on denim. So you want to refrain from wearing um, denim to the conference. If we go back to slide, this earlier slide, we have some apparel that may be donated that you can come through and try on and see if the size fits you if you do not have a full suit. Finding a, a basic pair of black flats or black fur or black pants can help you uh, just uh, enlarge your, your wardrobe. While we're here, the proper fit of your suit, and that's for men and women. Men, when you buy a suit, normally there's that little crisscross tag in the back, and the tag that appears right here on the arm, usually it's on the left-hand side of the arm, which says 
this was made by Cartier or Armani or whoever, Giorgio Vanzino, I don't know who you guys are wearing these days, those items are to be removed from your suit. Um, for the back part of the suit, where there's an opening, and normally they stitch down the pleat that's just for packaging and shipping, that should also be removed off of your suit prior to wearing it. You may also want to open up your uh, pockets because they're usually sewn down as well. Those are some tips for those who may not be familiar with a proper suit fit. When you buy a suit, men are usually buying theirs from some sort of vendor who may not have hemmed the pants beforehand, so they do have tailors on site that will address those needs for you. Please make sure that you have the proper fitting suit. All of the suits, as you can see, are up at the waist, and no one's really sagging except for this guy on the end. Um, Maurice, can you still hear me? Is everything okay on your guys' end? Yep, everything's good. Okay. So if we go back to interview suits, we also see that there's several different ways that these young ladies have presented themselves. Everything is pretty much covered and carried out as well as it should be. One thing I would offer, just as a disclaimer, these are suggestions. When you're buying a suit or a skirt, please make sure that your skirt fits appropriately. If it has a split in the back and the lining is pulling the split up, that means that your skirt is just a little too snug. So you may want to make sure that that is the right um, skirt and the right fit for you. Uh, next, on identifying the appropriate apparel for you, I did talk about that. Every local department store like Macy's, JCPenney, uh, Lauren Taylor, Bloomingdale's, uh, what are some other ones? Saks Fifth, Nordstrom. Nordstrom, all of those suits carry, all of those stores carry suits and business professional apparel. Burlington Factory. And Burlington Coat Factory, TJ Maxx, Marshall are the wholesalers of those particular stores. So, and I wish you could see the, the president of Nedby. The items that she has on, she found nice button-down shirt from Burlington Coat Factory. So you may want to check those stores out first before spending the higher dollar at the other stores. Again, this is a disclaimer. These are suggestions. Please remember to pack and bring comfortable items. That includes shoes. Uh, it also includes making yes, because you will be standing and walking for a while in some situations. So the president of Nesby UB is going to offer just this little bit of an insight. Good evening. In terms of comfortable items, I remember my first nationals. I thought I was really cute and wore these four-inch pumps. And by maybe hour two, I was walking around in socks. So we're loafers. It's not that bad. Thank you for that insight. You're so know your correct sizes and also your options. Again, the career fair is just a moment. If you think about some of the companies that are hiring you, I know I have a couple buddies that work at Nike, a couple buddies that work at Google, and some folks who may work in other entities like uh, Facebook. And they're allowed to wear jeans and sneakers to work. But when you're coming to get a job, you can't wear those items to the career fair. And there's a reason why. They want, to, they want to know that if they send you out to present for the company, that you are, one, in this position that you know how to present yourself well, how you, you know how to talk, you know how to exhibit the views of what they're asking you to do as one of their employees. Um, this is just up here for reference. Some people know all these things when they go to a tailor, when they go to their men's shop, they already know what their size neck shirt is. Please make sure you have your right shirt size. Make sure you have your right jacket size. If you stretch your arms across your chest and your jacket, yeah, it might split or bust. You might have the wrong size. So just make sure you think about those things and just get someone to help you. That's just a chart just to help you guys out. Um, you can reference it at another time. 
if you need to measure something and you do not have a tape measure, you, please try using a string or yarn. That's also a good way of getting a good measurement as well. And just put it up against a ruler. Um, for women and their measurements, please make sure you, you take the time to do that. the same thing as well. Um, when you do button down shirts, just make sure you have the appropriate A, B, and C uh, measurements because sometimes they run differently for different makers and different shirts and dresses or whatever you're purchasing. What to wear to your job interview? So I looked at Job Helper and they gave some very insightful um, options that you can put to use at FRC. You can look at this at your leisure and determine what is going to work best for you. But these are some tips on what an interviewer may be looking at and considering when they see you and you show up as these young people are here. Here are some other options. A statement dress, khaki knit match, um, a bow blouse and a skirt, um, black dress and tight, however you choose to uh, alter your wardrobe. Here's a professional guide. Now I have, I had a colleague on the PB last year. Before she came to the conference or convention, she did all of these kind of uh, setups here where she was looking at, she was developing all of these different looks. So her finished look, she would take the time to get her clothes and put them out and then identify which day she would wear yep. what. That also helps you with packing. So for the items on the right side of the screen, those are some of the no-nos that we talked about before. So I know you're gonna wear sneakers when you're traveling, jeans when you're traveling, but during the conferences and conventions, career fairs, these are the things that you should think about. Career fair do's and don'ts. Let's work on the do's first. Do bring your corporate finished look. Be tidy with it. Um, bring your portfolio with your resumes or your folder, whichever you're going to carry. And also have your interview elevator speech ready. That you will acquire and perfect through your mock interview sessions that you're going to schedule. Research the companies before talking to them. Please don't walk up to a company and be like, I don't know nothing about you, but I want a job with you because I like the colors of your logo that's not gonna be a great look for you. So please take the time, use your Nesby guide and get some information on why you wanna work for them and what pulled you into working for them. Very interesting fact, the Nesby guides, they always have some sort of details that will help you know who or what each company is looking for. So if Company XYZ is looking for seven IEs. They're not going to say they're looking for seven IEs. They're just going to say we're looking for IE, ME, or EE. If you're a civil, do you go to that stand? Absolutely not. Because there's nothing that they're going to be able to offer you because they're only looking for those three that they listed. So it's always great to research that process before going to their booth. Look for... Um, an opportunity to have a conversation, relax while you're talking to your, your uh, representatives when you walk up to the booth to talk to them, but don't become too comfortable where it's just really a, it's not professional. So make sure you, it, re, it remains professional. Ask when you, before you leave them, ask when you can follow up with them and or what their appropriate method for follow up with you will be from their team. Each company has different rules and bylaws that they follow to make sure that that happens. Don't forget that mint or two. And also, when you come to meet someone new, bring your confidence and your positivity with you. Always have a can-do attitude. If it's a job that you know you cannot do, please do not go out for that particular job, but choose the one that you know you would be a good fit for, and then ask questions that will funnel the conversation so that you can figure out if they feel that you're a good fit for them. Again, it's pretty much like a conversation to see if how, will we work together well? Will this work together for both of us? The next thing on our don'ts, this is some no-nos. 
I've had some, and I must preference this statement with, these are suggestions. But there are also stories that I, as a recruiter for one of the companies one year, I sat through training, and some of the things that came out was horrific. And it wasn't just for Nesby events, but other events that we recruited for. And the biggest no-nos were uh, folks wearing hats or coming through with bonnets and wave caps, like those should never enter into a career fair. No tight attire uh, or revealing clothing, shorts and t-shirts. No flip-flops, poor hygiene, or unironed clothing. Those are all key pieces that were mentioned to me by colleagues and other colleagues have mentioned to other CI chairs in the past. So you want to kind of make sure that you are um, really good with what you need to, to do. And, and check with a roommate that you're rooming with. I'm sure that your chapter members will let you know, hey, you might want to fix something or get that right, or can I borrow this? And we've had chapters who share, you know, hey, here's my blazer, borrow it for a couple minutes, run and get your job, bring my blazer back though and then we can talk. So that just think about the strategies on how you can work with that. Incomplete resumes. There's no excuse for that. We have given you the formula for how you can get that handled. I'm prepared to talk about your experiences. If you have something on your resume and you don't know what's on your resume, that's gonna be a red flag. Lack um, the appropriate knowledge of a company that you are meeting with. Don't go to Nike and talk about Adidas. That wouldn't be good. Or don't go to Dow and talk about DuPont because they're two different entities. Um, unable to comfortably, comfortably speak with corporate representatives. No eye contact, a limb handshake, poor body language. Um, you look like you don't want to be there, then you should not uh, exhibit any of those behaviors when you're going for an opportunity. Some companies do not have business cards or exact times for follow-up, so please be aware of that and please don't pressure them to give it to you because they may have been instructed not to share their personal emails with you because of HR rules. Do not forget that breath mint and refrain from chewing gum if you can. One other thing that I want to offer before we move too far with the, the last few slides, for those students who may be on a budget, and every college student has a budget, um, you want to think about looking at some consignment shops that may offer the same things that you may need. There's some programs like Dress for Success, which I've spoken with, which they are able to assist in you getting prepared for an, in an interview as well. And each city, you can go online, DFS, I think it's DFS.com, and they can offer some information on how to prep yourself for a career interview as well. Well, it's career fair day. I'm at the entrance. What do I expect? Well, you can expect to see a NSBCI CI chair and some volunteers to greet you, some other NSBCI leadership, and they may give you some feedback. And that feedback might be, hey, did you forget da da da? Could be, you forgot your tie, please visit our career fair prep center. It's not to harm you, it's just to help you. Um, we are working on making sure that all of our members are presented in a well and a great fashion at these career fairs. Have your resumes ready. Make sure you have a polished corporate interview look. We talked about that. And they referred to the previous slides for that. And I will say again, please don't chew a lot of gum because that's one of those pet peeves. <laughs> be alert and present. Be in the moment. Be right there. Don't think about what you got going on when you're leaving or the party that's going to happen or the entertainment that's going to happen in the evening during the evening. Please make sure that you are alert and in the moment. Companies look for students who are quick on their toes because that says to them that if I put you in my factory or in my, on my floor in a setting with multiple people, you can move at a moment's notice and bring some solutions to our problem. Engineers are problem solvers. We're creative problem solvers. We have huge imagination, and they need to see that. Please give that to them. 
Research the companies. I can't overly stress that. Look at their bios. They are there for your uh, consumption. Please make sure you use them. That is great reading material while you're traveling to the FRC and or waiting in a line to be spoken to by one of the companies. Remember to be professional at all times. That's even in restaurants, that's walking around, because our career representatives go eat. And sometimes if they see that you came by their booth and you just get really like lit lit <laughs> after hours, that may not be a good look for you. So you wanna be careful with your professionalism during our FRCs and conventions. Career fair strategies. We talked about the NSBE guidebook. We also talked about thinking about our discipline. If I'm an IE, I'm gonna use the guidebook, look for industrial engineering positions. I'm also gonna look at the locations of the companies that are offering these IE um, positions. If I'm not available to move to Texas, then I shouldn't be interviewing for a position that's only in Texas. If I'm considering this opportunity, I need to ask questions about what the day-to-day -day responsibilities are for an industrial engineer. What do you expect me to do? How do you expect me to do it? Um, and not necessarily how do you expect me to do it where they're walking you through step-by-step, -step, but what are the tools that you expect your IEs to have upon entry into your company? Ask yourself, after talking to these individuals, can you see yourself working there? Is this a good fit for me and them? So is this a good fit for us? Before you walk in that particular career fair, I would also suggest that you pick your top three companies that are going to be there that you want to meet with first. Day one, out of the gate, fresh out of the gate. Let's meet with these first three companies. Make sure my, my resume is right. Make sure my elevator speech is right, make sure everything I need to have for them is correct. If they needed a intake form completed, make sure I have that completed. Day two, continue going through the process of looking at other companies that may also offer you some things or that you may still be interested in. They may not be your first choices, but they may give you an opportunity with their company. Make sure that you're not doing the reverse end of it and trying to get to them and then the career fair is over with, you only have an hour and you haven't met with the three top companies you wanted to meet with. So make sure you do that. And in order to make sure that you're doing that effectively, each conference and convention has a map of the career fair floor. You can get that beforehand in some instances and right before you walk in the career fair. Look and see, okay, Nike's over here, Adidas is over there, uh, let's go look at DuPont, they're over here, Dow is over there, GM is over there, Whatever company it is that you want to work for, look to see where they are. They could be miles apart from each other or right next to each other. But just make sure that you know where they are so you can get to them effectively and go ahead and do that. One other suggestion we'd like to offer you with a strategy is pre-prepare your questions for each company. So if I research what companies, those top three companies I want to talk to, then I could talk to the fact of, okay, I want to work for Nike. I see that you guys have this, 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 and this. How does that work? What goes into that process? How do I become more uh, aware of what is expected of the day-to-day -day actions for this position? Those are more detailed questions, and if they're open-ended, it leads the way for an in-depth conversation with that particular representative, which can also lead to another interview. So that's that for that portion of it. Finish looks for Nesby career fairs. I just want to overly stress that the disclaimer is that these are all options and suggestions based on feedback from corporate, from corporate surveys, feedback, conversations, and partnerships, some items that were felt that could help the membership just uh, prepare themselves a little bit better for our career fairs. Recruiters look for professional dress and polished resumes, and the expectation is that the membership has met the campus career centers and or our Nesby Pick Center, Preparation Center, as well as uh, work with any CIs uh, in your particular region. So with that being said, um, Maurice, I'm going to move to the question and answer session. And if you can kind of give me what's in the chat room or if there's any questions in the chat room, we can address those now. I do not see any questions. All right. All right. 
Does anyone have any questions? I just took everyone off mute, so if anyone has any questions, they can ask. All right. Can everybody hear me? They should be able to. I can hear you. Okay. I got All one. Right. Recruiters okay. prefer page resumes or one page resume. Who's speaking? Hello? Is that Billy? Who's my name is Michael? Wait, maybe you should type it because I'm getting a feedback. I don't hear your oh, yeah. question. I see the question. Um, do recruiters prefer multiple page resumes or one page resumes? Perfect question. So for um, students, like NSB students between freshman and senior year, it is recommended that you do one page. For our graduate students who are um, finishing up their graduate work, be it a master's or a PhD, they may lend, in, lend an offering of a two-pager or either and or a CV. And normally the graduate students have more than one thing with them. They may have the resume and the CV just to cover themselves so that if a company wants to see their research and what items or publications that they have worked on, then they have some proof to share with them on the spot. And for the professionals, the professionals can have, uh, I think the going thing for resumes now is still two pages for professionals. When it comes down to folks who are professors and they're working with industries, they may also choose to uh, submit their CV. And CVs can be quite lengthy, so you may want to have more than one. One that you'll share with others and then the one that captures everything you've ever done. That might just be one you worked from to make an abbreviated one. Did I answer your question? <clears throat> yes, you did. Thanks for clarifying that. No problem. Any other questions for us? Maurice, was there anything you want to offer from professional board standpoint? Nope, I think you did a good job of covering everything, actually. Okay, okay. Uh, Takia, was there anything you wanted to add? Um, I had a question for you. Okay. Um, how important, if it is at all, that you have your resume in your LinkedIn page, um, I guess, in sync, the information that you have on there? Oh, that's a very good question because <laughs> a lot of people don't realize, and I did not even touch on media of um, presence. First, the LinkedIn question. Your LinkedIn and your resume should match. Maybe not to the level of detail that your physical resume matches to, but it should match as far as positions and experience. All those things should be listed on your LinkedIn profile. As far as like your other media representations, we did not talk about that. Please make sure you have professional, um, a professional representation on social media, because some of the companies they look to your Facebook, your Twitter, your Snapchat. They check all those That's things out before they even offer interviews. Sometimes, so just be cautious of what you're posting. 
Thank you. Did I answer your question, uh, Takia? Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Billy, you guys have any questions over in Ghana? No, I don't have any question. Maybe George, George, I still on the line. Maybe you would like to ask a question. You have a career fair. We're really on. Okay. So it says, okay, I'm in the, okay, do recruiters prefer multiple? We took care of that one. Okay. All right. It looks like, I think we answered all of the questions that were posted. George, George said he, he doesn't have any questions as well. He's okay. Okay. Yes. I just, I just saw that one. All right, so in essence of respecting the time of those on the call, um, Madam UB President, do you have anything you would like to say before we close out the call? And while she's coming, I just wanna say thank you for UB's chapter. Uh, they graciously reserved this room and the technology for us to go ahead and do this um, webinar tonight. So thank you very much. Um, good evening, everyone. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Um, this is just a personal message to all my freshmen that are out there and you're kind of worried about going to the conference. Like, I don't have any technical experience. Um, go anyways. It's an amazing experience, and you honestly never know who you're going to meet. Um, one of my freshmen last year actually got something lined up for his sophomore year. So don't be afraid. Just put yourself out there. and um, You know, all my older people, do what you do best. Very nice. Wow, older people. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so with that being said, I will say we are now in the midst of our FRC season. And I will say safe travels to all. Should you have any future questions or concerns with your specific region, you can reach out to myself. My email is listed there as pebci at nesby.org and or your specific CI regional chair, which theirs will be R1 or R2 PEBCI. Or R, I'm sorry, did I say that right? No, R1, yeah, R1 PEBCI or whatever your region is at nesby.org if there are no further questions thank you everyone maurice can you hang back for a minute please thank you too we'll be in touch yes billy <laughs> Uh, outside, outside the career fair, will you be organizing another 